Hey there, so I purpled Aphmau. Aphmau is a support unit who offers offensive auras as well as offensive and defensive frame buffs. And in this video, I'll be talking about her base kit, her EX plus limit breaks, and what she overall offers to team building. Stick around if you're interested. Shield Subverter deals 4 brave hits before an HP dump and has a decent 150% overflow. It batteries the party and grants them Automaton, a frame regen buff. On Aphmau, it applies Menejing's Tactics, a defensive frame buff that also includes debuff immunity. Sixth Element does, as you may guess, 6 brave hits before an HP dump. It also has 150% overflow, but instead of battering the party, it will instead deal 50% splash damage. Similar to Shield Subverter, it will also apply Automaton to the rest of the party, but on Aphmau, it will apply Oviang's Tactics, an offensive frame buff. While Aphmau is buffed in any fashion, her basic attacks are enhanced to Brave plus Fine Tuning and HP plus Optimization. Brave plus Fine Tuning deals one hit, batteries the party, and applies Fine Tuning to allies, which is a frame buff with the same effects as Menejing's tactics. HP plus Optimization deals one hit before an HP dump and applies Optimization, a frame buff that has the same effects as, as you may guess, Oviang's tactics. These buffs don't last very long, so turn stealers like Vayne and Lightning don't actually work that well with Aphmau, but at the very least, these buffs are very easy to reapply. Activation and Imperial Authority is one of those EX moves that has two parts of the animation just because it wants to be like that. At base EX, it's a 4 hit attack with an HP dump that has a decent 150% overflow, not much to talk about. But what's really interesting is the unique effect she gets from it, Oviang and Menejing. With it, her basic attacks are both turned into HP attacks and are enhanced even further than their normal enhanced form. The Menejing HP attack deals 3 single target hits, batteries the party, and has Brave Return, while the Oviang HP attack deals 3 group hits, deals split damage, and applies speed down. Both attacks apply Automaton and their respective buff, fine tuning from Menejing and optimization from Oviang, as well as extending all of Aphmau's own buffs by one turn. Oh, and also these attacks are instant actions that don't increase turn count, so she's amazingly turn efficient in that regard. On top of all of that, she gains a frame buff that raises her own max brave and attack, as well as raising party initial bravery, furthering any regen effects from herself or other party members. She may be a support unit, but Aphmau benefits very much from ingots, as you'd imagine considering this video is all about why I purpled mine. Realization improves the EX cast with more hits and overall strength. One ingot gives her 60% more max bravery and 40% more attack, which are actually very useful stats for her since her battery is based on her max bravery and she gets in attack so often. Two ingots lets her start off a fight with both her tactic buffs as well as a full EX gauge, meaning you can immediately start applying buffs and having free turns. Three ingots gives her the most additions and greatly improves her ability as a support. For one, it further improves the EX cast with even more hits, strength, and overflow, but it also improves her Menejing and Oviang HP attacks. HP 2 plus Oviang gains more hits, potency, and overflow, making it a much more effective damage option even for a support. HP 2 plus Menejing gives it more potency, but more importantly, lets it heal, and by large amount too, 80% of the HP damage dealt, and it's not hard to give her some bravery before her turn comes up again. This gives Aphmau probably the only thing she was missing in her kit, meaning you don't need to rely on a healing support and thus can slot in another damage unit or another of the ridiculously offensive supports we've been getting recently. In terms of shortcomings, basically the only thing I can think of is that the duration of the buffs she applies onto allies are really short, only 4 turns each for any of them. Given how easy it is to apply, it's not the biggest issue. But if I were to speculate anything, I think that an LD for her would just give her allied buffs longer durations or maybe some more auras. She doesn't boost overflow at all either, so if she got a party effect that let gain bravery overflow, I think that'd be pretty neat in the future unit ecosystem where lots of units have more attacks and HP dumps. As for who she compares to recently, the pool of highly meta support units who can do a lot of things is getting very full right now. It's kinda great. The most obvious point of comparison is Lena as both of them offer debuff immunity and a framed buff. Aphmau's total contributions are stronger, but Lena has stronger aura boosts, provides HP regen, overflow, and only needs to apply one buff to the party with a duration that works better with turn stealers than Aphmau's buffs do. If they could both coexist in the same party, the regen would be incredibly high and you wouldn't need to purple Aphmau for the healing. But that's a lot of frame buffs which may run into issues with other units, besides the fact that you're doubling up on debuff immunity. Between the two, I'd actually consider Aphmau as having more personal offensive contribution, 
and while she herself will keep turn count low thanks to free actions, she will not actually work the best with other units who would do the same. You'd likely prefer Lena for that. Lena sits back and shoots and provides auras that way, while Aphmau is constantly doing things to maintain buffs and is dumping bravery at the same time. Overall, I think Aphmau is just a lot of fun. She technically does have a rotation, but it's pretty easy to maintain, and with how often her EX is back, she's still going to be outputting a lot of damage without counting that many turns. As it stands, her skill counts are probably right where they need to be, and I don't think she really needs more as long as the team composition is right for the fight. Debuff immunity is rare and useful to have, and numbers wise, Aphmau is probably the best option for it. But of course, you can't just look at a unit like that. You should consider what else they bring to the table, how they do it, and the overall worth of the banner they're on. I intended to pity her if need be, but thankfully it did not come to that. Hopefully you enjoyed this overview and thought dub on Purple Aphmau, and if you liked the conversation, be sure to let me know. And if you're interested in this or any other Opera Omnia content, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.